Today here on rumblestrip.net, it's a long overdue update on our project motorcycle. This is a 1978 Yamaha 400E that has 1,015-ish, 1,041 original miles on it. And it's been a while since we worked on it, been a while since we've done much with it, been a long time since you've seen it on the channel. So today, we're going to try and get it running again. We'll give you the whole story here in just a second. So it's been, wow, two and a half years since we moved to the new place here. And I've ridden this motorcycle exactly zero times. I take that back. I've tried to run it up and down the street a few times, but kept running into issues. The problem was that it would run on one cylinder consistently and then the second cylinder occasionally. So the left cylinder would run great and then the right cylinder mm, off and on. So diagnosed it a little bit and initially thought it was points, right? It just, it's points. Who likes points? I don't. So tried, to, tried uh, changing it over to an electronic ignition system and it helped, but it didn't solve the problem. I'll show you that to you in just a second, it's hiding underneath here. Um, got that all wired up back in January when we had a warm day, didn't film it because it was a lot of futzy work, who cares? Uh, but I'll show you the, uh, show you kind of what it looks like. And then um, with the help of a friend of ours who we used to race with, uh, diagnosed it as a problem actually in the carburetors. Even though the carburetors had probably been rebuilt three times since I've owned it, there's still a problem with the carburetors. And how we figured that out was uh, when we, the, the right cylinder wasn't running, so what we did is stopped it, pulled the plug out of the right uh, cylinder, dropped a couple drops of gas into it, put the plug in, and uh, fired it back up. Boom! Ran awesome for about uh, seven seconds. <laughs> and then it fell off. So what does that tell you? Carburetors. So we sent a carburetors out to Washington to my podcast car partner, uh, Garrett, who can go through these things faster than like he can have it completely rebuilt in the time it takes me to uh, to look at it, essentially. So those came back this week or earlier this week, and uh, he's gone through them completely. He had to replace a idle screw because um, it was messed up. I don't know if that was the problem, but it was part of the problem. Uh, I think he said pilot jet was was messed up and a few other things. He went through it. So fingers crossed. This thing is actually going to run today. We'll see. Okay, so underneath here, uh, where the points used to live is now the electronic ignition. This was a kit. Uh, did a little Googling for it, and I'll uh, perhaps I'll put a link in the description for you, for the two of you who will care about it. Um, but it was, wasn't too bad to do. It still has to be timed and everything, but it's going to be pretty close to where it needs to be. So, um, so where points used to live, we now have electronic ignition and the wires come out. And I'll show you that. And I want to point out a uh, product here that I think I'm going to do a full review on. You know, it takes all four minutes, but freaking awesome product that made this thing so much easier to to put together. And was it took us a long time to get to the point because of a frustration of trying to wire this thing. I will put a link in the description for these, for sure. Uh, these are awesome. I found these from uh, Sloppy Mechanics, and uh, big thanks to him for uh, pointing these out one day. So what these are, is these are connectors for wiring, um, but they do a couple things. They have solder built into them here in the center. Let's see if we can get a better picture here. So there's solder in the middle there and then you can seal up the wires against um, moisture from there and basically what you do is you put your two wires in there, you use a heat gun and you melt it all together. So the solder melts and it connects your wires so you'll have a much better connection than just a crimp connection and then especially because it's a motorcycle these will melt and this will help to seal your uh, your connections, and I think this uh, this whole box here was like fifteen bucks, and it's like some of the best fifteen dollars you'll ever spend. Again, I will put a link in the description for you. 
And then this is what these connections kind of look like right here when they're done. So you can see where two wires come together and they melt together and solder. So the reason why this was an issue is that some of these wires are like 22 gauge and other wires are like 16 gauge. So trying to splice a bunch of stuff together here was a major pain in the ass and this made life so much easier. But as you can see, we got it all put together now. So that's why that part of the job is done and dusted. So now it's off to put the carburetors on. All right, so I know the, uh, the light isn't like outstanding here to see what's going on, but I mean, really how hard can it be to put these carburetors back in? And if you don't know how to do this, well, you know. So probably this part is gonna get sped up while I reassemble everything, but just in case you care. You struggle, throw a little dish soap in there. Amazing how much easier that got. So let's just cinch these up. Let me the same on both sides here. I know exciting stuff here, but actually kind of exciting that this thing actually might get ridden this year because. Uh, coming up on another episode here pretty soon, uh, we're going to start, we're going to show off a uh, new helmet that we got. Arai sent over a new uh, Quantum X helmet, and we'll show that off maybe in this one, maybe in another one. But a uh, cool new helmet, something we needed, because I think our newest helmet that I have right now is, Jesus, probably 10 years old at this point, so well past due of replacement, not that it's gone down but just timed out because just like tires uh, there's sort of time limits on that kind of material so especially the the EPS and again even though it's been sitting mostly in a closet um, yeah stuff wears out and I'd rather be safe than sorry so helmets I mean would I have bought this helmet uh, if Arai hadn't sent it Probably not this particular one, just because uh, MSRP on it's a little, a little pricey. But I've owned a ride helmets in the past, and they are worth every single dollar that you spend on them because I've gone down and crashed in them a couple times. And uh, yeah, they've. I can't say it saved my life, but probably minimized the damage <laughs> when my head hit the pavement. So, anyways. We continue on this one this is a fun one to uh, to deal with this little piece that goes back to the air boxes here this is always a, a fun piece to get back on and actually let me get that dish soap stuff back out just your basic dawn dishwashing detergent just a Oops, how do I, ah, going backwards here. Finger, that one, yeah, just a little, on the finger here, and of course I lose the clamp.
you struggle, throw a little dish soap in there. Amazing how much easier that got. So let's just cinch these up. Let me just see them on both sides here. I know exciting stuff here, but actually kind of exciting that this thing actually might get ridden this year. Because uh, coming up on another episode here pretty soon, uh, we're going to start, we're going to show off a uh, new helmet that we got. Arai sent over a new uh, Quantum X helmet, and we'll show that off maybe in this one, maybe in another one. But a uh, cool new helmet, something we needed, because I think our newest helmet that I have right now is, Jesus, probably 10 years old at this point, so well past due of replacement. Not that it's gone down, but just timed out because just like tires, uh, there's sort of time limits on that kind of material, so especially the, the EPS. And again, even though it's been sitting mostly in a closet, um, yeah, stuff wears out. And I'd rather be safe than sorry. So, helmets, I mean, would I have bought this helmet uh, if Arai hadn't sent it? Probably not this particular one, just because uh, MSRP on it's a little, a little pricey, but... I've owned Arai helmets in the past, and they are worth every single dollar that you spend on them because I've gone down and crashed in them a couple times. And, uh, yeah, they I can't say it saved my life, but probably minimized the damage <laughs> when my head hit the pavement. So, anyways, we continue on. This one, this is the fun one to, uh, to deal with. This little piece that goes back to the air boxes here, this is always a fun piece to get back on and actually let me get that dish soap stuff back out just your basic dawn dishwashing detergent just a oops how do I ah going backwards here finger that one yeah just a little on the finger here and I lose the clamp. Trying to do this a little bit like this video today, a little bit like Matt from Sloppy Mechanics does. But, you know, not because I'm trying to copy, but just because it works as far as a video style and a lot of people like these kind of workshop style videos and if it actually helps one other person get their old ass motorcycle back on the road then cool <laughs>
the difference in the world. Nicer it is to try and get something to go back on. charger for a couple months so I'm sure it'll be flat and that'll be an issue when it comes time to start it exciting stuff here screw tightening but I know some of you are watching and going, hey look, the clamp isn't in the right position and it's not going to tighten it down right, just wasting time. So actually the uh, end of March here. Well, yeah, it's like the 24th, I think, of March. And uh, just be able to be outside and, and not be shitty for a change is welcome. You would not believe it's been a long, not necessarily like brutally cold winter. It just seems to go on forever. cold overcast it's crappy enough you don't want to I don't say you don't want to go outside but just like it's so crappy outside it's like really I gotta go out in this and put on 47 layers of clothes it's just because it says it's 15 degrees or 20 degrees and in the Midwest with our as damp as it gets here yeah it was way colder go out Utah and Colorado and Arizona and Nevada, 20 degrees, and you're like, ah, oh, it's fine, no big deal. As long as the wind's not blowing ridiculous out there, right? Because it happens, but just because it's so much drier, makes it easier. And my buddy Jamie showed up, so we're gonna have a little help here. Cool. That's it. So,
blood. <laughs> but let's see, so. Come on. 